Welcome to another Factor Fiction Friday. I am the guinea pig, Christopher McKell. He is the professor, Jason Parsons. Every week, we share with you the same principles I have used to lose over 35 pounds in just three months. Nice. With the help of this guy right here. Nice. Today, I'm excited because it's a humdinger of an episode. We are talking about is intermittent fasting better for you or better for fat loss than eating more frequent meals? I'll let the professor take it away. First of all, I'm gonna commend you on humdinger. You don't hear that word very often, so that's, that's interesting. I'm not even sure what that means, but. Um, this is uh, probably one of the most common questions I get nowadays when it comes to nutrition intake. It's very popular, intermittent fasting. We also hear a lot about this, what's that keto diet? We'll talk about that one another time, but intermittent fasting is very popular recently in the nutrition circles out there. Um, and so I get a lot of questions from people, and this is actually interesting because it's something we've used um, a lot with you to get great results. 35 pounds you're down now? That's right. That's, that's a huge change. That's tw about 12 pounds a month this guy's been losing. So that's, that's some tremendous change in his body, which is wonderful. I like that he's wearing the yellow shirt today. You can see how svelte he is, right? So let's talk a little, about, uh, a little bit more about how the body works and how intermittent fasting plays into that. So first of all, it's important to understand we got this little picture fire back here. I like to use fire to, to talk about old caveman days when we first started learning how to use fire to cook our foods. One of our prior videos, we talked about how uh, cooking foods with fire or heat or something like that changes the chemical composition of food, makes it more availability of the nutrition calories inside those foods so you can get more out of it. For a fat loss goal, that's not necessarily a good thing, right? If we have a food that only 100 calories are available, you cook it, now 200 are available. That's not necessarily a good thing, it's more calories. And we know for fat loss purposes, you wanna decrease the calories going in your face and increase the calories going out to stay in a calorie deficit. So back in the caveman days, when we started first cooking foods to get more energy out of them, more calories, um, it was hit or miss when we had food. We had to hunt down a, a woolly mammoth and catch that thing, you had food for days, that was great. But then you didn't have anything for maybe days, weeks, or months would go by with no food like that because we had to search and hunt for it. Fast forward to today, there's a grocery store every 12 feet. We have more food than we know what to do with and there's a reason why two-thirds of Americans are overweight, right? It's because we have so much food available and there's this socio-cultural standard of eating all the time. Breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack, 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 snack. Maybe go to bed and have another snack, right? So we have a lot more food available nowadays than we did thousands of years ago, and we eat way more frequently nowadays than we did thousands of years ago. In human evolutionary terms, our bodies are made to go without. We are genetically engineered with all the cells, the fat cells that we have all over our body, body fat, right? To be able to have a whole bunch of food at one time, store the extra we don't need in the fat cells, and then go a long period before we had our next meal. That's how we're engineered. However, in today's society, we don't go through that process per se. And that's where this concept of intermittent fasting comes in. We're actually made to be able to intermittent fast. So something a lot of people don't realize when I get questions about intermittent fasting is that everybody everywhere already is intermittent fasting. If you think about it, when you look on the clock, you go to bed eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night and you sleep all night with no food going in your mouth. I don't like sleep with food in my hand or anything. So most of us go at least eight hours of time fasting before we have breakfast, maybe something like that. I myself, I stay up late. I, I, I stay, tend to go to bed at 11 o'clock, maybe even midnight. And then I'll sleep all the way till say 9 a.m. And then I don't really like, I'm not a breakfast person, so I might go till noon, maybe even one before I have some food. So I might spend 12 hours every day accidentally fasting before I have some food. The whole craze of intermittent fasting is about purposefully having stretches of time with no food intake, specifically when you're awake, right? That's the main part. We all know we go through those hours of sleeping when we're eating. So there's some variations on what that looks like. You can see here, most people already have eight hours of sleep and 16 hours of time when they have food available, that breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snack, snack thing. Um, I myself am trying to do it at 12, 12, I sleep <laughs> and don't eat for 12 hours, and then have 12 hours of food. And then you'll start to see what's more common for intermittent fasting uh, recommendations out there of 16 hours with no food, eight of that being sleep, eight awake, right? And then eight hours of food. And then some people even go all the way up to 20 hours of no food and four. It's interesting because if we stop and look at it, we think about it for a second, what we're basically doing is going from a bunch of meals spread through the day to just one short period of time where maybe have us one big meal, maybe a snack house, but usually it's just one big meal, right? And I like to break it down to really simple terms so everybody can understand it. Look at this diagram up here. If you're consuming 2,000 calories in a day and you do it all in one meal because you're fasting for 20 hours and you only have that small window of time to eat, 
That 2,000 calories eaten all at one time technically is the same thing as if you had four meals of 500, 500, 500, 500 spread throughout a day like the average person might do in a 16 hours of feeding, right? So ultimately, the calories equate. It's still the same number of total calories that you're consuming. It's just smashed into a small portion of time. And if we look at the science, the studies and research that's been done on intermittent fasting and the different variations of time, if calories are equated, there really is no difference in the metabolism of your body. Metabolism is just a big fancy word. It means how your body utilizes energy and exchanges it in different systems. There's no difference there. And there's really no difference in fat loss either if calories are the same, spread out or done at one time. Ugh. So generally, generally speaking, you're saying that this is actually fiction. Yes. This intermittent fasting is no better than having four or five meals. There's no big weight loss difference. Fat loss, sorry. It's fat got, loss. It breaks a lot of hearts when I explain it like this because this, hopefully this makes sense. But the reality is intermittent fasting is really not better for fat loss than eating a whole bunch of small frequent meals. It's just not. And the science tells us that, that of course, across the board. There are some caveats to it. There's a very important thing to understand here. We've talked about this in various other Factor Fiction Fridays. What ultimately becomes most important for people is what kind of a feeding system or diet, if you want to use that as the term, can you stick to that allows you to control your calories, right? Some people, they thrive on carbohydrates, but they're very regimented in their mind and they can eat exact amounts and not overeat. I'm not that guy. I tend to overeat if I have something tasty. Mmm, cookies, and I don't eat too many of them, right? So maybe I shouldn't have the cookies. Not because cookies are bad, not because carbs are bad, but because I can't control myself. This is a reason that there's value to intermittent fasting. And one of the main reasons why we had you go on an intermittent fasting program is because it helps some people to control their total calories. If there's a space of time that you just can't eat, you're not allowed to because you're fasting, you're not going to overeat there. You're not going to go into excess of calories. And that allows you to be controlled with your intake. And that's, that's honestly the most important thing. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do for your fasting. I know we got uh, right. one of the things over here you, you mentioned that's a very viable tool for you is, is right. coffee. It's coffee. So when I'm fasting and, and I have kind of my schedule here, what I try to do. So I'm on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday program of fasting. So Mondays, uh, Wednesday, Fridays, I won't eat. Um, I'll eat Sunday dinner and then I won't eat again until Monday night at dinner when I get back from work. So you're going from dinner to dinner a full 24, 24 hours, hours without eating. Correct. Okay. Um, 24 hours could be sometimes 24, depending if I get home a little early, might be an hour off, so, but 20 to 24 hours of not eating. Um, and then these days where I'm not eating, and I pretty much every day anyway, but I'm drinking lots of black coffee. No cream, no sugar, don't need the extra calories and stuff. Um, it kind of goes against the fast. So I just drink a bunch of coffee, give me energized, focus, so I can get through my work day. Um, so real quick, you're getting the benefit of caffeine in the coffee. It tastes great, but you're getting caffeinated, right? Not non-caffeine, caffeine. right? So the caffeine is giving you the central nervous system stimulant so he can stay focused when he's at work, keeping the attention on his uh, tacit hand. Oftentimes, if people will fast for long periods of time, their blood sugar starts to go down. And if your blood sugar goes down too much, it's hard to focus, right? Our brain is the number one consumer of sugar in our body in a hypoglycemic state. Hypoglycemic just means low blood sugar, right? If you fast, you're not consuming anything, your blood sugar gets used up over time, and your blood sugar goes down, your brain starts to get loopy. Caffeine can help to refocus you, so that way you're getting your job done at work. That's a very important thing. Right. And caffeine also is an appetite suppressant. So it helps you, especially because you go super long periods of time, 24 hours without food. It makes it so you're not hungry, or as I like to call it, hangry. You get too hungry, you start getting grouchy and stuff, and that's also not conducive to work or social life or family life. So. Those are some positive benefits of caffeine there. Correct. And I specifically have it during the work week where I'll do it my fast for that reason because it's a lot easier for me to stay on this than if I do it on the weekend. Obviously, morning's crazy with the kids getting them ready to help you out the door and give them a class. So there's not much time for us to eat anyways. I can barely feed them. And then we get going. Then I get to the office. I can work. I can ease it. I mean, how many times have you been busy at work and just skip lunch on accident because you didn't realize that you weren't hungry and just focused doing your stuff? So for me, it's not even a... A difficult challenge or thing to do to fast almost 24 hours during the work week because that's just how busy my life is and how you know on the go and active I'm, um, my mind is going um, so that's what I like to do then <clears throat> you can see here kind of put these lines under Saturday could be even Sunday but sometimes something will come up on the weekend uh, say I go to the fair 
we just had the fair here in South Florida. A lot of fun. We got we got fried Oreos. We got fried everything. Fried Reese's. Yeah, fried the stick of butter. It's corn dogs. It's ridiculous. All this fun <laughs> stuff to eat. So because I knew I was going here, even though it was a Saturday, I decided to fast again. I didn't eat all morning or for lunch. And then when I went that evening to the fair, that's when I started eating. So I fasted because I knew I was going to probably consume more than my normal daily amount of calories go over the board. So by fasting that day, at least I cut out, uh, you know, exorbitant amount of calories I would have consumed. Yeah. So I'll use it. I, I can do it four times if I have to. So I'm really using it. Example here, tailgating. I love football. I'm a season ticket holder for the Dolphins and we'll go tailgating in the morning. So in this scenario, what I did was I had breakfast the day before, then I wouldn't eat the rest of the day till dinner. Wake up because we go tailgating. Uh, we leave the house at six o'clock in the morning. Start tailgating eight or nine in the morning. So I'm starting to eat and drink and all that then. So I kind of fasted the opposite. So I, I used my fasting New Year's Eve, same thing. Didn't eat all day, then ate at the party in the house. But I'm using the fasting to control my calorie intake for specific times, as it be it for an event or obviously just generally going throughout the work week. That's honestly that's probably the most potent and important aspect of using intermittent fasting as a tool, as a means to an end to ultimately keep your calories within limit that you're looking for, for your restriction to get to your fat loss goals, it's, it's a tool. And, and honestly, if people look at it in that way, it's a very viable tool. I, that's why I recommend it to you using intermittent fasting. Well, I have a lot of clients do the same thing because if used properly, it can great great results. With that being said, there are some times when we don't wanna have long periods, uh, you know, 12 hours, 16 hours, 20, 24 hours, without any food going in. If you are a person that exercises, and a lot of uh, you exercise regularly, I myself also, and a lot of our clients, a lot of people out there that watch this video, if you have exercises, specifically higher intensity exercise, strength training stuff, if you're doing hit circuits, high intensity interval training, if you're doing something like Orange Theory like you go to, um, any of these things that require a lot of sugar, right? High intensity exercise requires sugar metabolism. That's the stuff that's stored inside your muscles, it's in your bloodstream, right? If you have those types of exercise workouts, you're gonna need to have some sugar in your face um, prior to your exercise. So that means time your fasting in such a manner that you had one of your meals before you go to the gym, before you go to Orange Theater, before you go do the battle ropes or swing some kettlebells or whatever it is that you do in your workout. That way your body has the sugar available it needs to perform at a high level, right? We work out to create what's called an insult to the body. Basically, it's the challenge of the physical taxing that you've done to the, to the muscles themselves, to your nervous system, to all these systems, you wear them down, right? And in order to wear them down to get a response, an adaptation of getting stronger, faster, even burning some body fat, right? To get that response, you have to work hard, right? It's a workout, not a hangout. It has to be difficult. In order to work at that high enough level, you gotta have some fuel, sugar, that fuels the body, right? So. If you're gonna have exercise involved, adjust your fasting when you don't have food and your feeding when you do have food in such a manner that you fed yourself prior to the workout so you don't bonk out, low blood sugar, get lightheaded, pass out. Uh, every New Year's, you know, it's January right now, we see all kinds of New Year's resolutioners coming to the gym and then just like clockwork, we see people falling off the treadmill, bonk out. A, a lot of those people like, are people that, that I know that they're more the hangout. Yeah, the hangout instead of the workout, right? They're not used to this exercise stuff. It's crazy, right? <laughs> you have to pick that up. Oh my God. A uh, lot of people will come to the gym unprepared. They went all day without through work, didn't eat anything. Like you said, it's very common for people to get focused at work and only get by on coffee or caffeine or whatever. And then they get off and like, oh, I'm going to go to New Year's resolution. I'm going to the gym and do my thing. Haven't had any food. Come in and like, oh God, they're like, hey, and, and we have to pick them up off the floor and sit down. You're not dying, sir. You just don't have any blood sugar right now. So um, plan ahead. Think about it. There's purposefulness behind these things, right? Um, Jason, talking about that, I had a conversation with my business partner, Justin. He's in the back there. You can't see him. He's a behind the camera kind of guy. Um, talking about when you do this, and a lot of people do this, like myself. I did it for New Year's. Some of these events where I'm going to be drinking uh, quite a bit too, consuming lots of alcohol. Um, you want to be careful when you're doing this. Make sure you're eating just as fast as you're drinking when you get to this event or this party. Don't just start drinking. Forget to get that food in you first because then, oops, yeah. who's that on the floor? Yeah, yeah. You got, you've gone 20 hours with no food and then you have uh, your, your, your normal three beers. Real right. fast. Oh, I can take three beers, no problem. It's real easy. And I've, been, and I've, oh. I've done this a few times and I, it can be done where you do it in the right manner. Eat and drink, eat and drink and you're fine. I mean, yes, you get intoxicated, but you're not. Yeah. 
So just be careful. It's a big disclaimer I want to put there. I'm not, promoting, I'm not promoting fasting and going out partying. <laughs> Don't do that. That's just <laughs> what I've been able to accomplish. Anything else here? Ultimately, when we look at this from a scientific standpoint, no, intermittent fasting is not better for fat loss. However, the caveat, it can be used as a tool with anybody, including Chris here, who's lost 35 pounds in three months' time, and if you've been paying attention to our videos, he's shrinking by the day. <laughs> um, it can be used as a tool to get to your fat loss goals because it helps you control the total calories you take in in a given time. So, Thank you, Professor. That's another Fact of Fiction Friday. We hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you're gonna fast and party, eat just as fast as you drink. Till next week, signing off.